Hi everyone, this is the CircuitPython Weekly for September 12th, 2022. This is the time of week where we get together to talk about all things CircuitPython. I'm Paul Cutler, and I'm a member of the CircuitPython community. CircuitPython is a version of Python designed to run on tiny computers called microcontrollers. CircuitPython development is primarily sponsored by Adafruit, so if you want to support them and CircuitPython, please consider purchasing hardware from Adafruit.com. This meeting is hosted on the Adafruit Discord server. You can join anytime by going to adafru.it slash discord. We hold the meeting in the Circuit Dev text channel and the CircuitPython voice channel. The meeting typically happens on Mondays at 2 p.m. Eastern and 11 a.m. Pacific, except when it coincides with a U.S. holiday. In the notebook, there's a link to the calendar you can view online or add to your favorite calendar app. We will also send out notifications about upcoming meetings via Discord. If you'd rather if you would like to receive these notifications, ask us to add you to the Circuit Pythonistas Discord role. There is a notes document that accompanies the meeting and the recording. The notes document contains timestamps to go along with the video, so you can use the doc to view only the parts of the video that interest you the most. The meeting tends to run 45 to 60 minutes, so this gives you the option to skip around. After each meeting, we'll post a link for the next meeting's notes document in the Circuit Python dev channel on the Adafruit Discord. Check the pinned messages to find the latest notes doc so you can add your notes to the following meeting. If you wish to participate but cannot attend, you can leave hug reports and status updates in the document for us to read during the meeting. The meeting will be held in five parts. The first part is community news. This is a look at all things CircuitPython and Python on hardware in the community. It's a preview of our Python on microcontrollers newsletter. The second part is the state of CircuitPython, libraries, and Blinka. This is a statistical overview of the entire project. It's a chance to look at the project by the numbers separate from what we're all up to. The third part is hug reports. Hug reports is an opportunity to highlight the good things people are doing, taking the time to recognize the awesome folks in our community. The fourth part is status updates. Status updates is an opportunity to sync up on what we've been up to. Take a couple minutes to talk about what you've been doing in the last week, either personal or CircuitPython related, and what you'll be up to over the next week. The fifth part is In the Weeds. In the Weeds is an opportunity for more long-form discussions. These discussions can come out of status updates or be something you've identified ahead of time as too long for a status update. And that covers how the meeting will go. With that, we will go over to community news. Uh, Raspberry Pi just released a new version of the Raspberry Pi operating system. It's mostly bug fixes, but it does have one new big feature, support for the Pi Camera 2 library. It can only be used with newer versions of the Raspberry Pi OS, but the camera library is supposed to be much easier to use than the original. Next up is PyCon UK 2022 is happening this weekend, Friday through Sunday, September 16th through the 18th. There will be a Python on Hardware community showcase this Sunday where you can bring your projects to share. If you're in the UK or in Wales, check it out. And the last one is probably my favorite, which is a steam-powered Raspberry Pi Pico. Maker Mike Bell has used a small steam-powered engine to power a Raspberry Pi Pico along with a few accessories. The Pico can run for about 12 minutes before the water in the boiler is all gone. The CircuitPython Weekly Newsletter is a CircuitPython community-run newsletter emailed every Tuesday. The complete archives are available online and in the, the link is in the notes document. It highlights the latest Python on hardware related news from around the web, including CircuitPython, Python, and MicroPython development. To contribute your own news or project, edit next week's draft on GitHub, or submit a pull request with the changes. I submit a PR every week to Anne, and if you need any help, I'm always there to help you as well. You may also take a tweet with CircuitPython on Twitter or email cpnews at adafruit.com. All right, the state of CircuitPython, libraries, and Blinka. Last week, we saw 31 pull requests merged from 20 authors, which is great. A couple new names that I didn't recognize is, and I apologize if I pronounce any of these wrong, uh, Pepin Devos, Rivkis, Simple Theory. We had 10 reviewers, and we had 24 closed issues by 10 people, and 18 new issues opened by 14 people. Dan, will you do the core? Sure, hold on. I'm, I've lost my um, window. All 
All right, let's go ahead. Let's talk about the core, which is CircuitPython core um, firmware. Uh, in the past week, there were 13 pull requests merged. There were 11 authors. Um, a couple of new ones I see are Pepigen Devos, uh, and maybe that's it. And the other ones I've seen before. Five reviewers. Uh, thanks for MicroDev for coming back into review. And there are currently 19 open pull requests. A lot of those are on hold because of um, things beyond our control, kind of third party things. There were seven closed issues by four people and 10 open by six people. So we're getting behind a little bit, but it's not terrible yet. There are 572 open issues and there are five active milestones and six issues not assigned a milestone, which we need to triage. Okay, that's it. Now I'll turn it over to Katni for the library update. Thanks, Paul. This applies to all of the Adafruit CircuitPython libraries, which is everything that starts with Adafruit underscore CircuitPython underscore, as well as a few extras, including the community bundle and our cookie cutter. Uh, for the last week, we had 15 pull requests merged by eight different authors and eight different reviewers. The oldest merge pull request was a week old, and a majority of them were zero or one day, so we're still getting through some of the aging ones, but we are keeping up uh, pretty well with everything else. And that leaves us with 38 open pull requests. In terms of issues, there were 13 closed by seven people and five open by five people, leaving us down a bit, uh, with 622 open issues. 130 of those are uh, good first issues. If you are interested in contributing to CircuitPython on the Python side of things, check out circuitpython.org contributing. You'll find all this information and more, including open pull requests and open issues. If you're interested in reviewing, check out the open pull requests. If you have the hardware, test it. If you don't, check out the code, see if it looks right to you, check it for spelling, syntax, etc., and leave us a comment and let us know you did. Once you're more comfortable with that, we can talk about leveling you up to our review team. If you want to contribute code or documentation, check out the open issues. If you're new to everything, Good First Issue is a great place to start. We have a guide on contributing to CircuitPython using Git and GitHub, and we're always available on Discord to help out. So don't let that part intimidate you. Um, you can search the open issues either by uh, searching the page or you can search by label and uh, clear down that 622 issue list um, to something more manageable. In terms of library updates in the last seven days, we had no new libraries uh, and a series of updated libraries that I will not read off. And that's what I've got. Thanks, Katni. Melissa, will you cover Blinka for us, please? Sure. Uh, so Blinka is our CircuitPython compatibility layer for Raspberry Pi, MicroPython, uh, and other single board computers like Raspberry Pi. And uh, this week, we had three pull requests merged by three authors and two reviewers. There are currently nine open pull requests, and there were four closed issues by one person and three open by three people, leaving a net of 84 open issues. There were 11,826 Pi Wheels downloads in the last month, and we are currently supporting 91 boards, though I expect that to go up here this next week. And that's it. Awesome. Thanks, Melissa. Now it's time for Hug Reports. Hug Reports are a chance to highlight folks in the CircuitPython community for doing awesome things. I'll start, and then we'll go down the list alphabetically to give everyone a chance to participate. If you're text only, you're missing the meeting, but have hug reports in the notes document, I'm happy to read them off. So I've got a couple notes. I had to leave the meeting early. Um, Saturday morning, we did the community help desk. So thanks to everyone who showed up and, and covered my time there as well. I got my COVID booster Friday and it hit me hard Saturday morning. Um, thank you to Dan and Katni for the timestamper code that makes hosting this, this meeting way easier and a group hug. Next up, we have a group hug from 2231 Puppy, who's text only. After that is C. Grover, who is also text only. Um, he says, thanks to everyone who participated in the CircuitPython Community Help Desk. Special thanks to those who helped and continue to diagnose a challenging display drawing speed and brightness issue with a Titano running uh, 8.0 beta zero. Dan? Okay, thanks. Um, thanks to MicroDev and Gambler, Mark Gambler, for uh, recent fixes to CircuitPython and follow-ups on uh, other things. 
Related to that, thanks to Jeff for tracking down the true cause of a pre-commit build environment mystery. Uh, Lee Atkinson had trouble with this, and uh, it was very confusing because it works for some people and not others, and it has to do with virtual env and venv and a whole bunch of and Debian packages, and it's very confusing, but uh, Jeff figured it out. Uh, thanks to Naradoc and Tetric, who are working on PRs and support of a whole bunch of wings. It's really great to have people working on that stuff. Uh, really, really helpful. Um, thanks to Retired Wizard and Bill ADAT, who's they're, they're testing out new features and finding bugs in the new code that we've been PRing. Uh, thanks to Katni, who's been persevering, trying to find the mysteries of uh, read switches that one might buy on Amazon or other places. And she can tell you more about that later. And thanks to you, uh, Paul, for volunteering to be weekly meeting host. That's really great. It spreads the load. Happy really holiday. wonderful. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Next up is DJ Devin 3 and then Foamy Guy. I'd like to send a hug to Hopcappy for helping me get past a lot of errors and setting up MySys2 and TO for Windows VS Code. Anic Data for showing me the error of my ways with Socket Pool and a great way to remember it in the Highlander voice, there can only be one pool. Uh, to Naradoc for always correcting me whenever I say anything wrong. He's been my mentor for a while, even if he doesn't realize it. Uh, MacGyver, the developer of TO for personally coming into Discord and working on package errors, feature updates, and submitting a PR to MySys2 so the default TO install in MySys2 isn't a four-year-old version. Hopefully we'll see an update for MySys2 get pushed out for his efforts, uh, which should make things a little easier for TO uh, users on every platform, but especially for Windows. Uh, hug report to Katni for working on the Laura Mailbox project. I see how deep she's had to go into the code, and I just want to send her a word of encouragement and looking forward to using her upcoming learned guide for my own mailbox project. To Mark Gambler for sending me a show and tell badge. I've honestly always wanted one, and I'm giddy with joy for receiving it. It's like a newbie badge of honor, and I will display it with pride. To C. Grover and Foamy Guy for initiating a community-wide bug hunt during community help desk on Saturday morning. I learned a lot about bug hunting, and it was extremely helpful. To Paul Cutler and Tammy Mix for hosting uh, the Saturday night, the Saturday morning session of community help desk. It was totally worth waking up for coffee and a chat on a Saturday. And to everyone else at Adafruit for helping turn dreams into reality every single day. Thanks, DJ Devin Three. Foamy Guy, you're up next. Alrighty, thanks, Paul. Uh, hug reports this week um, to Tammy, uh, Keith, C. Grover, DJ Devin Three, Mark Gambler, uh, to you, Paul, and to Dexter, uh, as well as anybody else who I may have missed that participated in the help desk. I had a great time with that over the past weekend. I'm looking forward to um, getting the uh, the next one in when we do. Um, over on GitHub, uh, this user's uh, name is kind of short for Snaky Maker Cat. Uh, thank you to them for sleuthing and figuring out a pretty uh, intricate issue with the display text library and submitting a fix for it uh, as their first contribution that I could see across CircuitPython. So congratulations and thank you to them. Uh, thank you to you, Paul, for uh, joining the rotation to help host this meeting. Thank you to uh, C. Grover, Mark Gambler, DJ Devon, and anybody else from the help desk uh, who, or, or any of the PRs or issues at this point, really, uh, who helped troubleshoot and look into the strange display drawing speed issue that cropped up, uh, and then a group hug for everybody. Thanks. Thanks, Fummy Guy. Katni? All right. So, super huge hug and thanks. To Paul Cutler, our host, for joining the CircuitPython weekly meeting host rotation and for jumping in by hosting today. Uh, six or seven hugs to Naradoc and Argon Blue on Discord for helping me multiple times over the weekend with CircuitPython issues and weirdness that I was running into. To my bestie Brian for helping me with a CircuitPython program to identify read switch terminals. To everyone who hosted the CircuitPython community help desk this past weekend, I hear it was amazing and I look forward to hearing more to uh, Dan for trying to help me understand read switches and for making suggestions regarding the read switch explanation in my upcoming guide, as well as um, explaining uh, or verifying that I explained time alarms and pin alarms well enough um, in the guide also. 
uh, and to Oats and Honey, Mulhorn and Emperor, and Toddbot on Discord for helping me with a battery voltage drain question. It was a little bit of a weird one, and everybody had uh, everybody had um, some input on it, and uh, it helped me out and gave me the answer I needed, and a group hug for everyone else. Thanks, Katni. I will read off the next couple, starting with Keith the Engineer. He has a hug report for Tanny Makes Things, myself, Mark. DJ Devin 3, Foamy Guy, Maddie T, C Grover, and everyone involved with the Community Help Desk. It was a great experience, and I'm really looking forward to the next one. A hug report from Mark, aka Gambler, for confirming a bug that Keith ran into with the Metro ESP32-S2, and DJ Devin 3 for testing it on the ESP32-S2 board that they had and highlighting that the bug doesn't occur on all ESP32-S2s. A hug report for Anecdata for a really good sample code, up, code in a GitHub issue that made it easy to test if my bug was one that was addressed in an already opened issue. And lastly, to the awesome, helpful community as a whole. Everyone's support makes working on projects so much more fun and special. Next up, I will read off Mark, aka Gambler. He has a hug report for Tammy Makes Things, Keith, Foamy Guy, and me, and everyone else who was at the community help desk. A hug report for Seagrover and Foamy Guy for poking around the display shapes Pi Portal Titano issue on Saturday, which turned out to be a stranger but larger performance issue than any of us thought at first. Next up, we have Tammy Makes Things. Thanks. So I have hug reports for Paul Cutler, Keith, the EE, Foamy Guy, and everyone else who joined in the community help desk. Um, and also to Paul for stepping in to record at least part of the event when my computer suddenly refused to see any valid audio capture devices in OBS, which I think is a problem with the Mac OS beta that I'm running, um, unfortunately, which means it won't be fixed until the beta is fixed. Um, hug report to Foamy Guy and everybody else who was working on that display performance issue. I never did check back yet and see what the ultimate cause turned out to be, but that was some amazing troubleshooting. And group hug to the community for being awesome. Thanks. The last one we have is from Tectric, who's text only, so I'll read those off. The first hug report is for Tammy Makes Things for hosting the community help desk this past weekend. Sad I couldn't make it, but excited to help with the next one. Cedar Grove Studios for the new library and the community bundle. A hug report for Duck. Ducky the Scientist and Foamy Guy for fixing the data notation for the RTTL library. I have a dependent project where I noticed the bug but never confirmed it, so I'm glad that my songs will finally play correctly. And lastly, a group hug. Next up is status updates. Status updates is our time to sync up on what we're doing. I'll start and we'll go through the list alphabetically to give everyone a chance to participate. When I call on you, take a couple of minutes to talk about what you've been doing since the last meeting and what you'll be doing up until the next meeting. This is also an opportunity to provide tips and tricks relevant to what people are working on. If a discussion becomes too much for status, status updates, we will move it to in the weeds. All right, last week I interviewed Braden Lane for the CircuitPython show. That'll come out in about three weeks. He's got some really cool CircuitPython products. Um, Toddbot and I announced that we're creating a new podcast um, called The Bootloader, which will debut in two weeks. Um, it'll be news and stuff we think is interesting that we'll share from the maker and tech communities. And lastly, I'm working on a 32 by 8 NeoPixel trying to make it sound reactive with a spectrogram and make a great product pro progress and almost done. Um, this week, I'll be recording the first episode of The Bootloader with Toddbot. I ordered some new audio equipment for the podcast, so it's like Christmas while I'm waiting for it. And unfortunately, I will miss next Monday's meeting. Next up, we have 2231 Puppy, who is text only. Last week, finished assembling my eFidget PCB and ran CircuitPython on it. This week, work out the assorted hardware and software bugs in the eFidget. Next up is C Grover, who is also is text only. Seagrover submitted two community bundle libraries, Palette Fader, which has been merged, and DRV8830 Motor Controller Driver, which is waiting for review. Now that I'm having relatively good success navigating Cookie Cutter and Precommit, there are plans to submit more community bundle libraries, starting with Range Slicer, a map range like class that incorporates input, yep, not even going to try to say that word, hysteresis, to reduce noise without filtering delays. Works nicely as a Eurorack CV quantizer, but can be applied to other tasks like sensor and potentiometer noise reduction. I used it on a few projects to simulate rotary selection switches with potentiometers. 
Reduce the size of the lawn by 50% to cut water consumption and waste. Trying to be proactive, we don't have water issues in our area yet. It was suggested that I was just bored with the weekly mowing tasks. Next up, we have Dan H. Okay, thanks. Uh, so I've been working on um, deep sleep current consumption and uh, originally we were just trying to make deep sleep uh, consume as little current as possible, but in fact you might want to leave things on during deep sleep, like power an I2C sensor that might uh, give you a uh, pin transition, for instance, to wake you up. So I'm adding uh, an argument to the deep egg to the alarm dot exit and deep sleep uh, call, which will allow you to preserve the current state of pins. And hopefully that will work out. And I have to I have to do some more testing on that, but it should allow kind of finer grain control over what's going on during deep sleep in terms of the pin state. And there's still a lot of other things I'm working on for 800, fixing old bugs and new regressions that keep coming up because we get new issue reports all the time. Okay. Thanks, Dan. Next up is DJ Devon 3. Oh, there we go. Uh, let's see. Last week, I ironed out bugs in my Flockbox weather station. Post a link to that. Uh, and this week, I lost, <laughs> lost power twice this week due to lightning storms, and the battery backup didn't skip a beat. And there was no crashing due to... Uh, no Wi-Fi or disconnection from open weather maps, so I put in some error handling that works great now. Um, let's see, and I took Toddbot's uh, eight-step Pico step sequencer and designed a 16-step uh, sequencer that is obviously, you know, TR-808 inspired because it's 16. Uh, designed a, a PCB based on that. Um, Let's see, he took his board schematics from GitHub in a flurry of excitement, hammered out a board design in with two days with Red Bull. Then I sent the board off to the fab. No idea if it works, so we'll see if it's going to smoke or not. Uh, I started on an RFM mailbox project that quickly turned into an encrypted RFM messenger based on the question someone had about RFM. And so that got me curious, and I dove straight into RFM and encryption, uh, We're oddly enough. Um, and I already have a proof of concept working with fake chat streams, um, like ping ponging back and forth. And this is a really big undertaking because uh, the RFM library by default does not have encryption baked in. Yes, you can send to different nodes where it will only pick up the node, but the plain, but the the message itself is still in plain text. So I'm working on a way to encrypt the plain text and then only send it to that directed node, so it's not all open air if you want you know an encryption you know layer it, one will be available and that's all i got thanks cool project call me guy you're up next all right thanks paul uh last week i cookie cuttered a, a new library up for the flip clock display io widget uh, that i've been working on Did some work to expand on the examples i had kind of um only the most basic proof of concept as an example with bunch of older unused stuff in it still. So got those cleaned up to show all of the actual basic uh, functionality. Um, participated in the help desk over the past weekend. And then uh, for this upcoming week, um, as well as uh, earlier this morning, I've been testing and reviewing some PRs, uh, including an interesting one that had me learning a bit about the RTTTL spec, which is a uh, ringtone transfer language. Um, I'd wasn't too up on that before, but I've uh, learned quite a bit about that this morning in order to test and review a PR there. Um, a couple other things in the works this week are going to be adding some more documentation and cleaning up the flip clock library code, as well as implementing a couple of options inside there that will uh, allow you to use smaller sprite sheets if you want, which I think will help it work on devices that don't have as much RAM as the uh, Feather TFT devices. Um, outside of the CircuitPython world, uh, for about the next month or so, I'm teaching JavaScript courses on uh, in the evenings a couple of nights a week. So I will be uh, less around in the evenings while I do that. That's what I have for now. Thanks. Thank you. That's very cool. Kenny, you're up. Thanks, Paul. So last week, 
I uh, worked on the Wi-Fi mailbox notifier guide. The text content is for the most part in place. The last thing to do is images. I probably did other things, but mostly I worked on the guide. This week, I need to get images for the mailbox guide and get it into moderation to be published. And once that's done, I will find out what's next. And that's pretty much all I've got going on. Thanks, Katni. Maker Melissa, you're up next. Okay, just a second. I'm trying to, oh, I found it in the docs. Okay. Um, last week, I finished up writing the Web Workflow Code Editor Quick Start Guide, and I wrote a bug fix uh, for the core for folders being able to move inside themselves, uh, but needs a little rework on that. I fixed a few bugs I found in the code editor while writing the guide. I updated the loading animation with the spinning circular blinka. I added uh, directory upload functionality to the code editor, and I've improved the dialogue layering a bit. And this week I'm working on uh, a code restructure I've been wanting to do for a while, and I'm testing that. And after that, I'm going to be working on some features I have in a little list I have. And that's it. Thanks. Next up, we have Mark Gambler, who is lurking. Last week, he submitted a PR for the Display Shapes Pi Portal issue. There's still a brightness setting issue, but the slowdown is now gone. Thanks for the update. Tammy makes things. You're up next. Thanks. So last week we had the first Circuit Python Community Help Desk event. It went really well, and there was lots of positive feedback, and there was some great conversation and discussions in both the text and voice chats. Um, I really liked that we kind of left the format loose, and we just had some really interesting conversation happening, as well as Circuit Python stuff. I also did a bit of hacking on the Disco tool, a uh, Python tool that Narodoc wrote. Um, and I'm trying to make it so that when you do things which trigger circup commands, like installing and updating libraries, it automatically runs a Disco tool cleanup on Mac OS so that the extended attribute files that get generated with Mac OS writing to non-Mac file systems get removed because they can take up a ton of space on the device. Um, this week, I'm hoping to finish that up and also see whether there's a way we can make CIRCUP just not generate those files in the first place. I don't know if there's something we can do with how it downloads the library bundles to prevent that problem, but I want to do a little fiddling around with that. Um, and I'm trying to find a workaround for my OBS issue until the new version of Mac OS comes out of beta. And that's what I've got. Thanks. Uh, next up is TechTrick, who is text only. Last week, created a new library for the Adafruit CircuitPython bundle, a library for working with location beacons like iBeacons. Submitted a fix for Adabot's state of CircuitPython formatting. And submitted a fix for the cookie cutter, adding blank keywords to the pyproject.tomo file sometimes. This week, potential PRs for a cookie cutter update and Adabot patch for instructions on installing optional dependencies defined in a repo's optional requirements.txt file. Add more documentation to the core. Look at new libraries to create, as well as potentially port two from Arduino. And lastly, additional typing PR reviews. That was status updates. Next up, we have In the Weeds. In the Weeds is an opportunity for more long-form discussions that either come out of status updates or that folks have identified ahead of time. If you have any In the Weeds topics, please make sure they get added while we're discussing other things. So this week, Tectric added a great one, which is what is the community planning to do around Hacktoberfest this year? Um, Tectric says he loved joining it last year and would love to help set things up if that's something we're interested in doing again this year. Um, I also had a, a response to that too, is we, we should probably start thinking about planning an October help desk event and maybe we could tie the two together. Comments? Uh, do you want me to read off my response? Yes, please, sorry. Okay, so we are absolutely doing Hacktoberfest this year and I would love nothing more than for someone else to help out with things. Adabot automatically applies the Hacktoberfest label to all the good first issues as Hacktoberfest begins. And then we typically see an influx of PRs. So the biggest thing I need help with is keeping track of those PRs and putting in the work with the authors to get those PRs merged. So basically in terms of what Tetric already does, 
um, continue doing what you already do, but maybe on a bigger scale for a short period of time. Does Adabot add that label for like Blink and libraries like that? I'm not certain whether Blink is included. I know it does for the, in fact, I'm almost certain Blink is not included. Um, um, I could be wrong though. I would have to look. I can totally check that out. Um, I know it does on the libraries that are that fall under the library section in the state of CircuitPython. Um, mm. So all of those 130 good first issues would end up um, with the Hacktoberfest label. And it's automatically removed when Hacktoberfest ends. Um, but I will take a look and see if it snags uh, Blinka 2. Basically, it needs to be labeled good first issue. Okay, and yeah. then it just gets added automatically. Okay, cool. Thanks. Yep. So it sounds like there's interest in doing it. It's just a matter of who's going to lead the effort and, and coordinate. For sure. And like I'm usually end up leading it. And so bringing Tectric in would be super helpful. Okay. Well, we and anybody else who wants to be involved. Absolutely. If anyone else wants to participate in Hacktoberfest, um, probably message us in CircuitPython dev channel. Um, or ping any one of us in the meeting as well that, that showed interest. Anything else for In the Weeds this week? All right, we'll wrap it up. This has been the CircuitPython weekly meeting for September 12th, 2022. Thank you to everyone who participated. If you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython and those that work on CircuitPython, consider purchasing from the Adafruit shop at adafruit.com. The video of this meeting will be released on YouTube at youtube.com slash Adafruit, and the podcast will be available on major podcast services. It will also be featured in the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter. Visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe. The next meeting will be held next Monday as usual at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. The meeting is held on the Adafruit Discord, which you can join by going to adafru.it slash discord. To be notified about the meeting and any changes to the time or day, you can be asked to be added to the Circuit Pythonistas role on Discord. We hope to see you all next week. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Good everyone. Job. Thank you very much, Paul.